So if you guys ever wondered uh, what's inside these GNB LiPos, uh, this is one that has suffered a crash and is kind of all squished and bent. And so I'm going to actually uh, kill it and um, take it apart. But before you can take it apart, obviously you need to drain the battery completely. So I'm going to actually use this uh, little LiPo killer device here from, uh, I think it's a company called URUAV. And uh, basically you plug it in here. I'm going to have to use an XD60 to XD30 adapter and I'll drain the battery to zero volts. But I think you can also use this uh, to drain it to a certain set voltage, uh, four volts to three volts. And so, let's see, I think this battery is at storage voltage right now. Let's check that. So yeah, it's a three cell battery, 3.83, 3.85, 3.3. So it's about storage voltage right now. And if we plug this in, it should power it up. And it is set to 3.4 volts, so I believe these lights will stay on until those cells are at 3.4 volts and then they'll turn off. So if we set it to something higher, like 4 volts, and then I want to power cycle this. I don't believe these lights will stay on. It's going to go through its power up, you know, power up phase here. You can see these lights don't, aren't on because it's actually below 4 volts already. So you can actually... Uh, use this to set your batteries to storage voltage, 3.8 volts, or something in between. But in this case, I'm going to just plug this in via the XD30 and an XD60 adapter, plug it into here, and then let it drain all the way. I think it's going to take a quite a bit of time actually to drain it to zero. It uses some, I think, a, I don't know what these are, resistors possibly, to uh, drain off the energy as heat. And yeah, once this is at zero volts, then we can go ahead and take it apart safely and see what's inside. Okay, so I finally got this to drain completely to zero volts. And you do have to leave this plugged in here. Uh, this little light LED will be on while there's still power. And I left it run, uh, I let it run overnight. So I'm not exactly sure how many hours it took, but it did let it run many hours, at least 10 hours. You do want to make sure you have no voltage here on the battery. Uh, before you start taking it apart, otherwise you could risk a lipo fire. Um, obviously now it's completely dead, it's safe to go ahead and take it apart, which is what I'm going to do next. Uh, but you want to definitely also check with your multimeter on the connections here to make sure that it is actually at zero volts. And yeah, so I checked it with the multimeter and it's fine. So we'll go ahead and we'll tear it this apart now. And what I usually do with dead batteries, I like to save all the little connectors here because these are uh, still useful. I could use them somewhere else. If I want to make a 3S battery of my own, for example, I could use these parts. So I um, usually don't throw these away. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to take all the little pieces off. So first you have this uh, plastic, clear plastic heat shrink on here. We're going to go ahead and take that off first. Okay, so now that's off. I think we just have a sticker here. And it looks like uh, it's just, just a sticker, some tape. So we're gonna, we're gonna, in order to pull these cells apart, we're gonna have to take this tape off. Okay, so we got that tape off and we got some markings on here, RE10. And over here as well, 550 milliamp hour. Yeah, it says ADC here. So I think this is supposed to be rated 80 to 160 C. So whatever these original cells are, obviously this is the one one S cell or one yeah one S cell here individual cells. This one is rated 80 C, and they got some kind of cardboard or something here. Yeah, actually, this looks like double-sided foam tape. So. Sometimes the made battery manufacturers will use a piece of plastic here or something like that just to give the battery a little bit of protection. In this case, it's just some foam. I think GMB batteries are known for minimalistic protection to keep the weight down. Because you can add more protection, but that adds more weight. Uh, this looks like also foam here as well. Okay, 
Got some more tape here, and this some wrapping around here, around the uh, where the wires go in. And this, yeah, this is some more foam tape here. And this foam tape is uh, this layer of foam is protecting the the leads here, where the wires come in and attach to the tabs on the cells. And then there's some. Uh, tape here, cap. I think it's called Kapton tape. Gonna have to cut that off. like this black piece of foam here as well. I'll pull this off too. So a lot of insulation and foam here around the top and you know, obviously you don't want to be taking hits here because then uh, you could you know potentially short the battery when, when it's charged and then it will probably cause a fire so that's probably why they have a lot of protection here and also you can see there's some little pieces of silicone here as well in between the cells. Again, I think that's there so in case you get smashed you're not going to get a short between the positive and the negative that will cause a fire. So I'm going to try and pull this out. Yeah, very interesting how the battery is put together and what this particular manufacturer is using in theirs. You see here, uh, there's a there. This is what that little piece looks like. It's just a piece of silicone as a, as a spacer, you know, to prevent the tabs from getting squeezed together. Here, you can see that if that's not there, you could get a short if you pull those together. And it looks like there's another one over here. It's just a small piece of silicone. Okay, so this is how the everything was wired up. So you have a JST and an XE30. They both go to the same tabs here for positive and negative on opposite ends of the battery. So this is the positive end of this cell here and the negative of the outside cell over here. Okay, so yeah, now we can see the connections of the balance lead here. So we got the one on the far outside is connected to the positive of the first cell and then the second wire of the balance lead here is going to be connected to the negative of the first cell and the positive of the second cell and then this third wire here is going to be the positive of the third cell and the negative of the second cell and then the last wire here goes to the negative of the last cell that's how a 3S LiPo is constructed. And I think that these cells here probably glued together somehow. So I'm going to go ahead and pop off all of these wires now. And we should be able to go ahead and just pull these cells apart. Okay, so you can see I think these are all going to be identical cells. Yeah, these are connected here and then this is just some, I think it's just some double sided tape that's holding these together. No other additional markings that I can see. Interesting. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to pull off this first. Just break off the tab here.
All right, so I got all the cells separated. Let's see, let's take the cell apart as well. Let's see what's actually inside these. So, this is just uh, some kind of foil or something that's holding the stuff inside. Got some tape here. You can see now, you know, to kind of snipping the foil off, and it's just a it's very flexible, as you can see here, without all the stuff holding the battery together. That's, I think, why these tend to get dented very easily. Okay, so uh, pretty much got most of the foil off of here. And you see we have a plastic bag or something that's holding the layers of the whatever this the lithium ion, you know, it makes it actually a lithium ion battery. I believe this is just a, a bunch of layers of the um, whatever the, the chemical substrate that actually uh, stores a charge. And, I can, and when I actually pop this open, I could smell some kind of, uh, smell kind of strange. So I'm not sure if I'm going to pop this bag open and let a lot, a lot of chemicals come, or uh, gases come out of here. I'm thinking it's probably just hydrogen gas, but it did smell kind of funny. And yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video. I don't, don't really want to, I'm pretty sure this is safe, but I don't want to take any chances. And I think this stuff is just, it's just black, as you can see here. And I believe that. This is layers of, of this lithium ion material that's actually in here, or lithium polymer material. That's pretty much a, what the battery looks like. And and if you are going to, um, you know, if you have a dead battery or a dented battery, you're not sure if it's safe to charge, definitely uh, grab one of these guys, these lipo killers, and just, uh, you know, connect it up there to this end here uh, for as long as you need until it's zero volts. And then you can just safely throw these into the trash. You don't have to actually throw them away in hazardous waste because uh, I'm pretty sure this stuff is environmentally friendly or should be okay. But they, you do need to discharge them all the way before you throw them in the trash. So definitely check out one of these uh, lipo killers if you want to safely dispose of your dead lipos. And hopefully this was an interesting video for you. Let me know in the comments below if you thought it was so. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Okay, so if you guys are still around uh, watching the video, I decided to go ahead and go ahead and take this plastic bag off and see what's actually inside here. Mm, not sure what's going to happen, but hopefully this uh, smell isn't going to kill me. Looks like we got some more tape holding this plastic on. Yep, and got this black substance here. Yeah, kind of a sticky black substance. Not sure what that is. Ah, okay, so this is how the battery is really made. So we see layers of stuff here. So. These little thin pieces of black, I think are the lithium polymers that are actually holding the charge. I mean, this is literally like paper thin. And it, it stinks, by the way. I'm not sure why it smells. It smells terrible. And then we got another one here. So this one is connected to the positive. I 
think. Yeah, it looks like it's connected to the positive. So there, it's a, it's layered like an accordion here. See that? So this is on this side over here, and then this is connected to the negative. I think. This is very interesting. So, and this is on the other side, and then this so is just tearing the battery apart. So they're on opposite layers of this piece of plastic here, as you can see. Oops, and it's just paper thin stuff here. But this is what. Oh man, this stuff smells terrible. I don't know what the hell that is, but yeah. I mean, I don't know how many layers of this is, but there's a. There's got to be a ton. I'll pull all of these off. Let's see here. Lots and lots of these. This is just one cell of a 550. A crap load. It's pretty crazy. Pretty amazing as well. Yeah, this is what composes a lithium polymer battery, a lipo battery. Yeah. Wow, there's whatever, how many number of these are, there's a lot of them. But yeah, crazy. Ooh. Okay, got the other end finally. So it just looks like they're alternating positives and negatives. It seems like these little pieces of whatever it is that they call that. If anyone knows the name of the terminology, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, this battery is totally destroyed. Anyone want to rebuild this? Just kidding. Yep, that's what that's what the battery looks like when you take it completely apart. So very interesting. Hope you found this interesting, and I'll talk to you guys later.